I wanted to start this video off by talking about my goals towards freedom, what that actually means to me, why is it such a core value of mine in order to kind of attain what I call true freedom. So basically I need to kind of go from the start in order to explain this fully of where I was in the UK and how I felt in order for you to really understand what freedom means to me. As a kid, I grew up in the UK. As soon as I finished school, I didn't really think I was good for anything. So I kind of tagged on to my father's business, which he was doing plumbing at the time. He was a sole trader. And I wasn't really good at it, to be fair. I couldn't pick it up. I didn't like it. I didn't like wearing tradesman uniform because I thought everyone was judging me. You know, over a period of time, I did get better and better and I started enjoying it a bit more. After this period of time, as I, w as I was an apprentice, I took a gap year out once I finished it. My gap year was cut short because my dad basically said that he wanted to move out to Croatia and he basically wanted to give me the business. And at that point, the business wasn't anything big. It was just a man in a van basically doing work as a sole trader, so nothing massive, you know. At that point, I was just past my apprenticeship. I didn't really know how to do anything and I didn't even have a driving license at that point. So I was like, oh my God, like, how am I going to take over this business? I don't even, I can't even drive, you know? So I called up my best mate and basically said, my dad's kind of packing in the business to move to Croatia. Do you want to like take it over with me? And he's like, okay, let me think about it. He kind of spoke to his parents. They weren't too keen. But in the end, he kind of went through with it and we started the business together. We put like a thousand pounds in each and bought a van and basically started work. He could drive, so that was great. Cutting a long, long story short, we managed to scale the team to seven people in total uh, with a half million turnover business. So it was pretty successful from the outside eyes, I guess you could call it that. But inside me, I always felt like I didn't achieve anything. And this is for various reasons. One of the reasons, of course, is because of my father, unfortunately. No matter how like big I would make the business, it would always be his business. He never kind of saw it as like my doing from where I got it, you know, uh, how I built it. And it was always his and it was always sort of nothing on my achievement. So in a way, I kind of just felt like I was basically running that business just for his ego, basically. And I know I shouldn't have got it to my head, but at the same time, I couldn't help it because I didn't really feel like I wanted to do that job. And to sort of, in the end, be sort of told all my achievements are basically because of him, that was a big off-putting point. Um, one of the major reasons why I did leave the business in the end. But the other thing is, is that I just realized that I'd spent 13 years of my life running a business that I didn't enjoy, that was taking up all my time, that was creating a lot of stress and anxiety for me because it was a job that people would call at the middle of the night to say there was water coming through the ceiling or something and you needed to react. It's one of those jobs which was kind of very difficult. And to kind of run a team at that young age, it was um, very, very stressful, along with the fact that everything I'd done was because of my father, basically. Even though at the very start, we didn't have that much work in, him giving me the business wasn't that much of a great help because we still had to have a side job working in a factory until we sort of built things up, got our own customers as well. Obviously, a few of his customers did help, and I'm thankful that he did help, but at the same time, I'm not thankful for what he kind of put into my head after. This is kind of like the feeling of entrapment because it felt like I wasn't right in my own narrative I wasn't writing my own book like my kind of path my legacy is being written by someone else it was basically everything that I achieve in life is pretty much my dad's doing basically that's what it felt like I felt a need to carry on that business because of him because he would be like oh I can't believe you're getting rid of my business or whatever you know that kind of thing so I felt like it was a my kind of mission that I had to keep it going but in the end, you know, I just thought, F it. Like, I came to my thoughts that even if one day I was a multimillionaire, after 10 more years in that business, being able to drive a Lamborghini, all this kind of stuff, have a big house, it meant nothing to me. It meant absolutely nothing to me. 
I just thought, I am not sacrificing any more time of my life for a job that just does not fulfill me in any kind of way possible. Not only that, I was just very kind of depressed in England as well, you know. The weather doesn't help, but it's, it's not all the weather, you know. It's the fact of just how everything ran for me, and I just, I don't know, I just didn't like being there anymore. Like, England, from what it was like 10, 15 years ago, has completely changed to what it is now. It's, it's completely changed. I mean, the town centre that was in, the whole, like, guild hall itself is kind of, like, shut. There's no shops in there. It's, like, dead when you go to the town. Everyone kind of just looks in bad wear. Like, no one looks healthy anymore. And it's just like it's going to the dogs. So I was very interested in many other businesses that I wanted to try. And this was my time to try it. You know, once I moved here, I tried several, several businesses. Had kind of, like, shiny object syndrome, to be fair. Tried so many. Learned a lot of skills. Some worked, some didn't. I'm still trying to find my way, but that's, you know, that's all part of it. That's all part of the journey. But yeah, so I needed to make two decisions. One was the hardest point in my life, which was to basically sell my side of the business. Yeah, and the other one was to basically move country. So I did that all at the same time. But yeah, I managed to find my way. And what I learned on the journey is that actually, you know, my self-confidence was very, very extremely low previously. I didn't think I was good at anything. And honestly, I kind of lent on my partner in business a bit too much because I just felt like I couldn't do that job. But then when I moved here and I actually like used my potential, I realized that actually I'm a lot more powerful than I ever thought I was. And I can achieve so much more because everything I tried, I like succeeded at. That's the thing, like the more you practice at things or the more you take things on, you realize that they're actually not as hard as you think they are or perceive that they are. Within the first year of moving here, basically got a girlfriend and she was in Latvia. I spent three weeks there and then we both decided to move to Croatia. And then I decided that on the same year I'd engage her. And four months from the time that I engaged her, I decided to get married in a completely different country. So I organized the whole wedding pretty much in four months, we did, from Croatia. <laughs> in a different country <laughs> with an invitation guests of like 200. It was crazy. And at that same time, we were looking at houses and I bought the house pretty much two months before I got married. The house, which I'm at now, didn't have electricity, didn't have water, needed full renovation. And my wife was pregnant. I forgot about that. So it was all those things all at the same time. And then we had to deal with it. I managed to pull everything off. I don't know how, but I managed to pull it all off. Within two years, I met the woman of my dreams, bought a house, moved country, left my business, had a baby, basically built a new life here. It was crazy, completely crazy when I think about it. Anyway, I'm kind of going off tangent here and you kind of want to know what my goals of freedom are. Since I moved here, I felt so much more free. I felt finally the first time in my life after 30 odd years, that finally the steering wheel of my own life was in my own hands. And if I fail, I fail. If I succeed, I succeed. But the beautiful feeling was that it was all in my control and no one else's. And this was something that was a whole new feeling that I'd never felt before. I was amazed. I was thrilled. I was excited. I felt so adventurous. Now that I'm here, you're probably wondering if I achieved all the freedom goals I wanted. I'm partially there, but I am still on that journey and I believe that it will still take many more years to reach the point that I want to reach. But what I do want is, one, a location-free job. So basically a job that's on the internet, that basically means I can take a laptop from here or anywhere in the world and work. So that's what I want. That's my freedom that I want. I want location freedom because I'm adventurous. I like to be in different places. I don't like to stagnate. I like now that I've got a base here, but I would like to travel some more still and experience other countries of what it's like to live in those countries as well. So that is one of my main goals, okay? So to achieve, you know, real location freedom, you obviously need to get a high-paying job or high-paying business. 
that kind of goal of 10k a month is something that I feel would be enough to basically live that life. Maybe a bit less would be enough anyway, but I'm putting it towards that kind of like 10k a month if I can get to that point um, to be able to live that and to be able to work from a laptop from anywhere in the world. This is another what reason why plumbing was never something I could fully commit to. It's a service-based business. You've always got to be around and that point where you think in your head where you can just sit back and relax in a chair and basically tell people what to do from what I've seen it's not realistic you know the more employees and stuff the more work you've got I couldn't see that ever happening for a very very long time so yeah it's basically having the freedom to be where I want having financial freedom to the point where I don't have to worry about money you can pay your bills you can go where you want you can eat what you want do what you want you know, kids don't stop you from doing that either. You know, some people have this in their mindset where they think, oh, you've got, I've got kids now and now I won't do it. But, you know, that was my mindset to start with until someone told me one thing. They said, what are the possibilities? And that kind of got in my head and I thought, you know what, what are the possibilities? Just because everyone's got it in their head that they can't live a life once they have kids doesn't mean that it's true. That's just their perception. So I chose to perceive it differently and decided that, Basically, I was going to take the matter in my own hands and basically travel with kids if I want to and do what I want to do, basically. And I think that's true freedom, you know, to have that kind of thing. One of the things that really threatened my freedom was obviously the coronavirus outbreak thing. I think for the first time in my life, when someone kind of tells you you can't leave the country or do what you want, you're kind of like, what the hell? What's going on? Basically, the UK government was basically saying, you can't leave the country. And I was like, well, I'm going to leave the country. I don't care what you say. Like, And that was the day that I kind of left and chose to leave. But I just hate that control. And I hate the control that they want to put on you in the future and all those kind of things. And I think that's why I enjoy being in Croatia. Because here, you feel a bit more free. Like, I can't really describe the feeling. But it's not so rules and regulations like let's just say for instance in England if you park in a parking space and you're touching the line you'll probably get a fine on your car right and there's cameras everywhere trying to catch your speed so they can make money blah 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 whereas here like pretty much people just ditch their cars wherever and some people may find that annoying but that chaoticness I kind of enjoy it's like well we're the people and if we want to throw our car here, we will. And, you know, I kind of like that. Because in England, say if you go to London and you see people parking on double yellows, they've probably got a supercar and they can pay the bill. So basically, they're above the law because they can earn more money. That fine that comes through, which is £100 or whatever, doesn't mean anything to them. So they can basically, they're above the law and they can do what they want. Here it's like, well, yeah, I go to Bank of Arts and everyone's parked everywhere. Some people park behind other cars and instead of someone getting really frustrated that someone's parked behind them, they realise that like they're probably parked there because they're doing something quick like nip into the bakery, which is going to take two minutes. So they'll just hang on and they'll be relaxed about it. They don't really care, you know, whereas like people in the UK would go nuts if someone did that. And it's just lifestyle here. Obviously, it could be annoying if it happened to you, but you just got to accept certain things about the culture, certain things about the lifestyle. And I like that propaganda and political stuff isn't basically shoved in my face constantly here. That you're kind of like free from it. It's not basically in your face all the time. So yeah, basically, in a nutshell, I just want to live a more free life. That is my true goal in life. And I hope that this video may inspire some other people to think about their life in a different way. And to know that it's possible, you know. I'm just an ordinary person. I didn't have any self-confidence. And I managed to get myself here. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Please subscribe to my channel as it helps. Also, I do have a newsletter below. If you are interested in my content and want to learn more about it, please join the free newsletter below. I will be sending out more content. I loved kind of sharing a bit of my story with you. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching.